little story for today is from a father who writes, I took my four-year-old four year daughter to the office today on take your kid to work day. But when we walked into the office, she started to cry. As concerned staff gathered around, I asked her what was wrong and she said, Daddy, where are all the clowns you said you worked with? <laughs> the innocence of children, right? So we commemorate today on December 28th, the feast day of the Holy Innocence, the youngest of all the martyrs, perhaps 20 or 30, perhaps 40 young boys under the age of two and some girls that were killed by the haste of the soldiers. We commemorate them today, the Holy Innocence. They are powerful intercessors for us. They're in heaven with the, surrounded by angels. They're with the Lord, with our Blessed Mother and great saints to intercede for the modern world, for the conversion of all the modern day King Herods who are trying to promote the slaughter of the innocents, especially the unborn. I'd like to just read to you a great passage from Bishop Sheen's book, one of the greatest books by Bishop Sheen. You can tell it's a good book because the cover is over here and the rest of the book's over there. One of the greatest books ever written on the life of Christ. It is called The Life of Christ by Bishop Fulton Sheen. And in a few paragraphs, I think he really captures this whole event of King Herod and the slaughter of the holy innocent children. He writes, Herod was fearful that he who came to bring a heavenly crown would steal away his own tinsel one. He pretended that he wanted to bring gifts, but the only gift he wanted was to bring death. Wicked men sometimes hide their evil designs under appearance of religion. I am a religious man, but men can make inquiries about Christ for two reasons, either to worship or to harm. Some would even make use of religion for their evil designs, as Herod made use of the wise men. Inquiries about religion do not produce the same results in all hearts. What men ask about divinity is never as important as why they ask it. Before Christ was two years of age, there was a shedding of blood for his sake. It was the first attempt on his life. A sword for the babe, stones for the man, the cross at the end. That is how his own received him. Bethlehem was the dawn of Calvary. The law of sacrifice would wind itself around him and his apostles and around so many of his followers for centuries to come, begin its work by snatching these young lives which are commemorated on the Feast of the Holy Innocents. An upended cross for St. Peter, a push from a steeple for St. James, a knife for St. Bartholomew, a cauldron of oil, followed by a long waiting for St. John, a sword for St. Paul, and many swords for the innocent babies of Bethlehem. The world will hate you, Christ promised all those who were signed with his seal. These innocents died for the king whom they had never known. Like little lambs, they died for the sake of the lamb. The prototypes of a long procession of martyrs these children who never struggled, but were crowned. In the circumcision, he shed his own blood. Now his coming heralds, his coming heralds the shedding of the blood of others for his sake. As circumcision was the mark of the old law, so persecution would be the mark of the new law. For my name's sake, he told his apostles, they would be hated. All things around him speak of his death, for that was his purpose of his coming. The very entrance door over the stable where he was born was marked with blood, as was the threshold of the Jews of Egypt. Innocent lambs in the Passover bled for him in centuries past. Now innocent children without spot, little human lambs bled for him. But God warned the wise men not to return to Herod. They returned home by another way. No one who ever meets Christ 
with a good will returns the same way as he came. Baffled in his design to kill the divine, the enraged tyrant ordered the indiscriminate slaughter of all male children under two years of age. There are more than one way of practicing birth control. Mary was already prepared for a cross in the life of her babe, but Joseph, moving on a lower level of awareness, needed the revelation of an angel telling him to take the child and his mother to Egypt. And then this concludes by saying, from Matthew, rise up, take the child and his mother and escape with them to Egypt and stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to do away with him. So Joseph rose from sleep and taking the mother and the child by night, he went away with them to Egypt and there he stayed until the death of Herod. So that's why one of the most beautiful titles of St. Joseph is the Savior of the Savior, because he saves our blessed mother's life. He saved the Son of God's life from the evil tyrant, King Herod. So today, let's pray for a greater respect for the sanctity of all human life from the moment of conception until natural death, and the for conversion of the hearts of all those who today are still trying to slaughter the innocent. I'll give you a blessing now with the relic of the holy innocent martyrs. To the intercession of the holy innocent children, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.